Sorry. 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 The Chairman House Committee Head Elega Cluster, Ms. Zoe Bashir. Chief Whip, uh, Chairman Aviation, Chairman Banking, Chairman Air Force, Honorable Boma, Deputy Chairman uh, Population and Chairman Population, and a very esteemed Yes, AON and the aviation sector that is present here. Um, good afternoon, and you're welcome to the House of Representatives. Uh, this meeting has been a long time coming. Um, I think we've scheduled a couple of times, right? Um, it's basically on a very narrow issue, as far as um, I know. A very narrow issue, and that issue is the issue of. Um, what has come to be known as um, blocked funds, rather come up with another terminology, blood funds, uh, we'll, we'll think about it, it doesn't sound too good. Um, but the whole idea is to see how we can um, resolve whatever issues there are, uh, because you're all, you're all in business and, and business has to move on, but business cannot move on without funds. So, so I get the... I get the simple uh, uh, logic behind all of this. So we'll hear from uh, the airlines. Unfortunately, um, the other relevant authorities are not here. The CBN, Ministry of Finance, Aviation, uh, everybody's in the villa right now for the ministerial Treats. I just came from there as well, um, and I met them there. But unfortunately, there's a, a clash of dates on, on, unknown to unknown to the committee on aviation. Uh, so they're all there. And it's a two-day retreat. So, but we'll go ahead. We'll get your submissions, um, and perhaps fix another date so that we can hear the other side. Um, so Wednesday or Thursday, maybe, uh, and um, Wednesday or Thursday, right? Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Well, 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 uh, yeah. Either either one, either Wednesday or because I mean the other side has to be heard as well, and I'll ask you to indulge us, and um, you may have to come back because it's better for both sides to be. Uh, otherwise, I would have said, you know. After your submission, we'll hear from the CBN and the rest of them, even without you. But um, I think it's better that you are both together and questions can be answered and we can prefer solutions however best we can. So we'll hear from the airlines. Thank you. Uh, to look at this problem uh, that is facing uh, the aviation industry, uh, the problem is not that really new. Uh, because we encountered it in 2016 and 2017, uh, where um, the airline funds, uh, but that for the foreign airline were blocked here. But the main issue here we are looking at is that of the aviation industry's access to foreign exchange. Uh, be it domestic airline or international airlines, here the, the, the real issue is how much access the airlines or the aviation industry have to foreign exchange in Nigeria. The aviation industry by nature is international. Um, the treaties that govern the aviation industry are international. We, don't, we domesticate it in various, uh, 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 in various laws, local laws, but by nature it's international. It's about moving people and goods from one territory to another. So the law that governs it are also international. And when a business is fundamentally international, the currency of that business is the United States dollar. So either you are operating as a domestic carrier or you are operating as, an, as a foreign carrier in this land, you have that uh, need that is predominant that you must have access to the foreign exchange. Now, for the domestic airline, they do have the need. The foreign airline comes with the terms of block fund. Why do they call it block fund? Is that the trade 
in our country, Nigeria, I'm in Nigeria, do I represent IATA, where we have both domestic and international airlines. Uh, they are, they, for the foreign airlines that trade here, they are formed, they are trading NERA, and they need to repatriate part of, those, uh, of, of their revenue into their country to take care of their operational charges. 99% of their cost is not based in Nigeria. And by law, we demand that those airlines should trade in NERA and not in dollars. And in the bilateral air service agreement between the foreign airlines uh, countries and Nigeria, there is a clause there for both of us, country, for both countries, in a bilateral way, that each country will support the, the airline of the other party in the perpetuation of their funds. And these are contractual obligations into nations, that nations have signed. So that would give them the legal standing for this airline, the foreign one, to come and ask for the, uh, the, the support of the government in having their funds repatriated. As of today, um, after the CBN intervention uh, of uh, August 29, we have 700,000 US, 700 million of US dollars of the airline fund blocked in Nigeria. This is astronomically high because it is the highest in the world there is no single country in the world that has that, uh, that amount of airline fund being blocked in a single country. Nigeria comes as the highest country with airline block fund. Nigeria accounts for 32% of the total airline block fund in the world. 32%. That's one quarter, uh, one third of the total world airline block fund. I think that is not good for our country. And it, it sent a signal to the international community, to anybody that wants to invest in the aviation industry in Nigeria, be it local or foreign, that it is not safe to invest in the country. That's the message it gives. That is the image it gives. That if you invest in, your, in this country, the aviation industry, you will not get your money. That's what it says. That's the reason why uh, we bring this matter to your attention, that for your intervention, as IATA, we stand for both domestic and international and foreign carrier. We, 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 we pursue the, 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 the uh, we advocate for the aviation industry. And one of the big problems that aviation industry is encountering out of many in Nigeria is the access to foreign exchange. And that is our first submission, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, so thank you. I mean, using your terminology, block funds is, is, um, it's not peculiar to Nigeria, correct? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's not just like Nigeria, the quantum. Exactly. It's the quantum. Yes. So it's a normal thing. It, it does happen in other countries. Okay. But but I, I needed to understand that. that. Yes. Okay. Quite, All right. Quite, yes. So who else is speaking on behalf of the airline? So, Mr. Honorable Chairman, thank you for this meeting and for the concern to discuss on Emirates backlog of funds to be repatriated. Honorable Speaker, unfortunately due to antitrust and anti-competition policy of Emirates Airline and uh, a conflict of interest issues, I'm not in a position to discuss in this forum about details of uh, backlog issues. However, we are open for one-on-one uh, -on -one private discussion on this matter. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. The point is that we discuss in here, it involves Emirates Airline private competition issues, so we'll not be able to discuss on those things in detail. Yeah, we're open for, yes, thank you, thank you, sir. thank you, Honorable Speaker. We cannot agree less with the IATA manager that aviation business is international. I spoke. Yeah, I think the main point that we made. Yes, So we can agree less with him that aviation industry and business is international, and the denomination there is U.S. dollars. We agree with him that there is BASA. The essence of BASA, more or less, is about 
reciprocity. BASA is not just about one country transferring money to the other country. I would also want, at the end of this meeting, for this honorable chamber to find out more from IATA and other airlines why we do not have the same number of reciprocity, the number of flights they make into Nigeria in two days. I also want to put for the record that Nigeria does not have the highest quantum of money of foreign airlines in this country, not only because we don't have foreign exchange, but it's because there is no country in the world where their window of travel to other parts of the world is to lies more than the more than the internal operators. It's only in Nigeria. Because apart from the little effort our colleague and their brother APC is making, every other in and out of flight into Nigeria to other parts of the world is by foreign airlines. That is wrong. The number of flights that United Arab Emirates make into Nigeria or British Airways, I will stand to be corrected if they make that number as much in other countries that have local operators that are flying internationally or national airlines that are flying to even the United States of America. And I also think that that quantum is also so because of disparity in prices that are being charged. I will want also this house to find out why Nigerians pay sometimes 50% more than other countries for the same number of hours of flight. Getting into the same airport, paying the same charges, and paying the same amount of fuel and cost per hour of flight. We local operators, we are very patriotic. We are concerned about the services Nigeria is getting. We love to compete with foreign airlines, but it is important for us to know that we are concerned about this. However, on the issue of block fund, in my little understanding of English, Block fund is money that is blocked. If EFCC blocks your money, you can assess it, right? If court blocks your money, you can assess it. If government blocks your money, you can assess it. So I do not think that foreign airline money is blocked. Their money is in their account. They have access to it. It's in Naira, and they can use it as their place including investing in Nigeria if they wish. But if that's the international terminology, so be it. But I understand that the policy of Nigeria is simple. We are going through some crisis with foreign exchange because of our earnings that have dropped, and there is I and E window. We local operators have been referred to I and E window. We want to know why the foreign airlines, at what rate, please, let's take note, at what rate to dollar are they converting their ticket? Because if for any reason their tickets are being converted at the rate of the parallel market, that is 700 and something Naira, and they want to come back to get official, trans, uh, official uh, uh, conversion at the rate of CBN, that must not be allowed. Because we are dealing with a station where the key tickets are already high. The NARA conversion is already high. So that means high ticket and double value, which simply means if your ticket is $1,000 and you convert it to be 740000 because of the parallel market, and we pay, because I know many occasions people have gone to buy a ticket and are converted at that rate, 
Then when you get it at 740,000 Naira, then you come back to CBN to put pressure on the scarce available foreign exchange to convert it at 440. That means you are already getting almost $2,000. So I want just, I may not have all the information, but I'm posing these questions and they have answers and you can also verify it with the records. So if they indeed sell at 440 Naira, why do they do so? When there is already a clear instruction from CBN, manufacturers, industrialists, and other Nigerians should shop for from the I and E window. And I and E window is not usually the official rate. So are they contravening the instruction and the policy of CBN? Because being in Nigeria also makes it mandatory that you should obey our rules and regulations instead of dumping all these things on this our country and the CBN. That is one set. Then I come to us at AON. Our money is not blocked, but it's in our account and we cannot use it because 99% of what we need is in foreign exchange. That is why today most of the airlines are operating below their capacity, which is if you have 10 aircraft, you might see three of them only flying because seven is due for service and maintenance. When you see them littered all over, it's not because we don't have money, it's because we don't have access to foreign exchange. And those spare parts that we used to enjoy on credit, which the aviation industry is credit. You take today, you pay tomorrow. We don't have the liberty anymore because you are behind your previous supply. And besides, it is gradually becoming a known thing all over the world that our credit rating is becoming lower and lower. Our vendors will tell us, you as a company, we hold at a very high esteem. But as a country, we have a problem. So if there is anything this great assembly will do, as always, to create a window for foreign exchange, we have to be considered. And I think also, we have said this in different fora, it will be really unfair for anybody to think that there is nothing, there is something the foreign airlines can do, Nigeria airlines cannot do. The only difference is funding. I am aware for the records that since, since COVID, the United Arab Emirates government has put nothing less than six point something billion US dollars to support UAE. To, for, to, for, to support Emirates. Probably if that fund was not put in there, they would have been worse off than most, com most aviation companies that have crumpled here. It's on record. But I don't think the only thing the entire aviation industry in Nigeria has received as a support is 4 billion Naira since COVID. 4 billion Naira does not take care of two weeks operational cost of EPIs. If we have the support within our employment, we have captains from, all, from Emirates, we have captains from Ethiopian Airlines. The aviation industry in Nigeria has grown from strength to strength. And before this crisis, before this foreign exchange crisis, before this aviation fuel fluctuations, go through it. We had run, this team you've seen here, had run the fastest and most efficient growing aviation industry in the world. The chairman of aviation, uh, this thing can attest to it. We deserve a clap, please.
We are only facing a situation now that is beyond our control. We have done very well. And it is within this world, Mr. Speaker, that we have three, four Nigerian airlines signing off for the first time 30, 30 new aircraft, 20 there, 30 there, and these manufacturers have started delivering. The case of APIS is here with us. So while we are considering the issues in aviation industry, please let us know that if these countries that are frustrating us are enjoying privileges in Nigeria, we must demand also for reciprocate actions. It is on record that during COVID, British Airways coming to Nigeria at well, multiple flights. But during COVID, APIS had to do a vacation flight from, of, like, from UK. It took so much trouble for them to get there. Even when they were allowed to get there, the government did not allow the team to come down and do uh, 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 safety, safety check on their craft, which is against international aviation regulation. You don't do that. So I want all this is to be factored. Ayata manager is here. He's talking about BASA. That BASA should not be biased only against Nigeria. So we want to operate compete with other airlines, but we also want to have some leverage, not, not even privilege. We want to have leverage to get there. We are in the business. We can give you how much it costs for one hour flight to UK. Nigerians should not be paying two million naira for economy. It's not possible. It should be, if you give me everything I need, they should be paying no less than 600,000 Naira to go to UK. This is where this money is piling up. We want to defend Nigeria. We want to defend this Arden. And this our airline business and the, and the space is huge. Anybody coming into here to operate should respect our rules, should respect us, and then don't just I'm twist the International Assembly or CBN. We are going through a crisis. And the other, finally, if we are supported to do this, I can tell you that in 24 months, 18 to 24 months, this so-called 70% of the world funds in the in, in our, uh, aviation company in the country should reduce to 10%. Because the 60% of it would have been revenue generated by United Nigeria, Airpeace, and other local operators that are not going to fly out of Nigeria. This is one of the greatest source of our capital flight out of this country. We can make this aviation money, keep it in this country. I can tell you, sir, all the foreign airlines put together don't have 10% of, of employment my company provide in my own little effort. They don't. So we need to look in what. Thank you very much. Well, we'll give the travel agencies, uh, I hear there's a representative of the travel agency, and Aita wants to respond. But first, Aita, what, I think what, um, what uh, we just heard was that, um, one, why you have so much money uh, that you cannot uh, repatriate is because of the lack of reciprocity in BASA and uh, the fact that our own airlines are not giving slots to fly in and out of your country. And that if, you, if that was opened up, um, you wouldn't have as much money blocked as you speak, as you say. So that's what I've, that's what I've just heard now. Um, but the conversion rate thing that you talked about, I don't know that Aeta is talking about 
money is already sitting down there and uh, cannot be repatriated. I think they're talking about moving forward. I mean, the conversion rate there, the, the money they want to repatriate now is at 400 and something, right? About, it's about 700 million dollars. At the rate of 400 and... So what he's saying, what he's saying is that uh, now you're charging at the parallel market rate. No, exactly. That's what I need to address. Sir. That's exactly what I need to address. I'm pleading the honorable speaker. If you just so, permit so let me, me get it right. Yes. That you're charging at the that is parallel. Not no, rate. that is no, that Your is tickets, incorrect. Are expensive, but you no. want to convert it? No, 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 sir. no, sir. That is what I need to address, and I will not like us. Please permit me, honourable speaker. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Allow me to, to address that first. Uh, yeah, you I, have to I, call. I Go ahead. Yes, I, I have to stand for the whole aviation industry. I had a three member airline within this, uh, the, uh, among the local airlines. Three members are member for Tayata. Tayata advocates for the aviation industry. We don't have a bias for anybody. So, so, so now I want to address the issue. Now, now, yes, yes, I, I want to address the issue. I want to address the issue of the exchange rate first. No, 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 please. Now, uh, yeah, I will address your question. It, yeah, it will go to your question because we, I don't want us to leave this meeting with the wrong information. It's absolutely wrong. Because the issue that the airline are not selling, the foreign airline are not selling tickets at parallel market rate. The airline don't have an exchange rate of their own. They don't have. You see, the exchange rate that they are using, it can be verified. You, know, you can buy your ticket to travel agent. You can buy it from the airlines. You can be verified. Let them show you. They are selling at the NAFEX rate. And the NAFEX rate today is lower than the spot rate that the CBN is selling the dollar. In fact, on every dollar that the airlines sell, they are making a loss on exchange rate. Please, please, please. They are making a loss on exchange rate. So I need to, so, so, so I need that to address. So, so, so. Please, hold on a second, please. Please, can you just please be done with your family or your excuse? This side as well, please. Okay. We're here to see the conduct of serious business. Go ahead. Yes, sir. So on the exchange rate, no airline has authority to determine the exchange rate for a country. A country is suffering. And the CPA and its agency determine the exchange rate. And that we have had several discussions with the CPA governor on that. So the, the, the rate that they have is determined by IATA, and IATA picks it on the NAFEX rate of everyday reading. And that rate today, I will tell you, the CBS sell the spot between at the last rate sold the spot of dollar between 459 and 500. Check it in the bank. That is the bank report. That is from the bid report. The airline was selling the ticket at that same period around 440. So they were losing, they are losing 18 dollars or 18 naira on every dollar. So that is to let you. So the, 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 the increase in the in the fare is not due to the exchange rate. And this can be verified. It can be verified. This just buy a ticket from a travel agent. Let them give you the look at the ROE. They're right here, the, the full the rate of exchange. Is there stating there? So that can be verified quickly. And so now let me address the issue of the yeah, of the yeah, fare. Of, of, of the fare. Now the fare presently, globally in the world, have gone up. Globally in the world because of the of, of the rate of, of, of the fuel rate. That is a global phenomenon. Everybody had gone on. But it has already been a debate, for example, to see that, okay, from Ghana, some fares are cheaper than from Nigeria. Now, I give you, a, I'll just pick an example. For example, if you are going to London, okay? Before this issue, the, the business class from Ghana is always cheaper than the business class from Nigeria. But the economy class, from Ghana was usually higher than the economic class fare from Nigeria to save London. Yes. That is by study by data that you have. The statistics are there. Now, that if you just look at it, why from two cabin of the same aircraft, you have that type of disparity between two countries? That is based easily on the demands and supply. Now, if you are in Nigeria, people are ready, I mean, in economics, there's a term we call willingness to pay. 
So if a Nigerian is willing to pay for the business that to have to that level, compared to a Ghanaian, that where half of the seat, half of the cabin in the business that is empty, so the airline will drop the fare there because it's empty. You need to, you need to fill. But in Nigeria, he has overbooking. And, for, and some people are ready to pay. So by law of demand and supply, it, it, to regulate the fare like that. So it is not that uh, someone's just doing that. That is what they, just, they are looking at. You can investigate the economic class for Nigeria vis a vis the economic class for Ghana. You see that Ghana is more expensive. So that's how it is, just by supply and demand. So you 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 charge based on what you think is somebody's capacity. No, no. Now, no. The, now, now the first no, the, now, yes, yes in, in the, the first determinant of any price is the cost. Yeah. The cost is the first because you first of all make a price to cover your cost, yeah. then you make a margin on it. So if from that now that margin that is being regulated, but at least the cost. If I'm operating from Nigeria and the cost is higher than I pay from another country, I expect my fare, my fare from Nigeria to be higher than the other country. For example, I have to pay more on this, I have to pay more on this. I can understand that. But usually it's on the cost basis that usually what the the, 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 and the willingness to pay and the market supply uh, the, the uh, supply and demand. Those are the three main factors, cost and then the fact. Address here. Um, I am not here to bust the bubble of international airlines or foreign airlines, but it's important to also address the needs of Nigerians. Most foreign airlines today have blocked access to direct booking by anybody on their system. And I'm saying this from personal experience. If you're trying to get a fare to the US today on British Airways, you might be allowed access to the Lagos London leg return, but the London New York or London US leg is going to be paid for in foreign exchange on a foreign credit card. You are not allowed to use your Nigerian credit card or your Nigerian debit card to make the payment. Now, ordinary, if I was in any other country, I can use the credit or debit card in that country to procure an airline ticket. For them to have done that, it's a deliberate act to frustrate Nigerians particularly, and at the same time ensure the issue of demand and supply as espoused by Dr. Fatokun, which is absolutely correct. But again, it boils down to what Dr. Obiora said in terms of the fact that if you have reciprocity, it goes beyond the fact that BA comes in here. How many Nigerian airlines you allow access into Heathrow? Reciprocity, is, it boils down to the fact that Nigeria designates an airline, whoever that airline is, to fly Lagos, London. Has the UK government accepted the Nigerian airline and provided the same level playing field for them to be able to access the market? And I'm saying this from the years, years gone by. I mean, I was in Nigeria Airways. We knew what happened at the time. It has not changed much. Now, what exactly they do is the fact that they have what you call aeropolitics, which unfortunately the Nigerian government has not allowed to play through in the case of the domestic carriers. Airpeace was a case in point with the UAE. We need to have a situation where the government supports its own. When we're talking about all these huge issues of foreign exchange being taken out of a country, it boils down to what are we doing to conserve it if we do not have our own reciprocating, irrespective of a capacity, we're not, even, we're not getting anywhere close. We must have airlines in Nigeria designated to fly. And it's not just a matter of designating them. The government must now ensure that they make sure these airlines can actually fly. And how do you do that? You ensure through the Foreign Affairs Ministry and through the Aviation Ministry that the necessary instruments to allow them access into those markets are provided. So these are key issues. The issue of airline fares, as we speak today, foreign airlines cannot absolve themselves of the fact that they are, at this point in time, exploiting Nigerians to the extreme. It's unfortunate, but that's the reality. Indeed, I have bought tickets out of Lagos 
into Accra on a business class and out of Accra to London, and the, ch the fare business class was cheaper than buying business class British Airways from Lagos, London. It's been a known fact, and I agree with the issue of demand and supply. But the reason that is in Nigeria is because the capacity is not there for the Nigerian airlines who, who have been designated to be allowed to fly. If Airpeace were to mount services into London and introduce fares that are cheaper than British Airways, I can guarantee you what would happen immediately is that the demand would skew from the side of uh, British Airways and come to Airpeace. Because if the fares are cheaper, Nigerians won't go there. But because the capacity hasn't been allowed to fly, it becomes very difficult. So I think it is very, very critical to understand that, yes, we can say everything we want to say about all these monies that, you know, sort of uh, uh, not being able, that they're not able to take out of a country. But it is important to make sure that, yes, we have bilateral agreements, there's basis for reciprocity, and it is allowed to, 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 to thrive. At the same time, Nigerians should not be allowed to be exploited by the issues that they know very little about. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Well, I think Erin was, um, was a very narrow issue. And that is their funds that they cannot take out. That's a narrow issue. But I think as of necessity, the, it appears that uh, the scope has been broadened uh, to why do you have that quantum of money not uh, being uh, uh, remitted out of the country. And so that's why I said by necessity. And other tangential but very important matters have come up the issue of the BASA, BASA principle of reciprocity, most important of all. Uh, so we'll get a, a, a committee on aviation. I think this is, because if you, can, if you don't treat that, then the issue of quote-unquote block funds, even if all that money is repatriated now, we're going to come back to the same, the same issue on the issue of slots and all of that. So. I, I think it's, it's important that we get, and the people that can address the issue of reciprocity, like he rightly said, Foreign Affairs Minister, uh, Aviation, and perhaps Attorney General, I, I, they need to be present. We need to hear from, from them. Uh, and I totally agree. I totally agree that uh, what's good for the goose, they say is good for the gander. And uh, it has to cut both ways. So we'll, we'll hear from the travel, I think somebody from the travel agency what, what wanted to add, then I think Dr. Obiora wanted to say something. Yeah. Okay, let's okay. see. Speaker, on behalf of the travel agency, actually, Dr. Obiora made a very a big representation of the issue. Like you said, why we are here is to see how we can solve the issue of block funds. From the travel agency side, we are pleading with the government, you know, to see how they can help the airlines assess this fund. I want to disagree with Dr. Obiora that this money can be recycled. This is operational cost. It's not a profit which we can ask them to recycle in Nigeria or invest in Nigeria. However, the issue of disparity in airfares and our inability to travel agents right now to assess inventory of the airlines to issue tickets. That is a big issue. I want to ask that you help us, ask the airlines to open the inventory so that the travel agency can assess what they have and do bookings. If I take, if I, for instance, if I can mention an airline, you see, we cannot book now in their system. You go online. And the implication of going online is that you must pay in dollar. That is putting pressure in this scarce foreign exchange. Because if you must, some of the airlines here, their flights are getting full. But those tickets are not issued in Naira. They are issued in dollar. Because you have to go online. And if you must go online to buy a ticket, you must pay in dollar. And these flights are full. What it means is that Nigerians are coughing, are struggling to assess dollar to pay for these tickets. So if we can look at that, that is very important. And the travel agency cannot issue ticket from their portal, from their system, except you go online. Going online means you have to pay with a credit card, just like what he said. So let them open the system so that we can book and pay in Naira, despite the rate they want to look at it. 
So, but for their fund, the travel agency is asking that, please help us, let them assess this money and repatriate back to their home countries as quickly as possible. Is a, this is a, what we're talking about, um, in terms of even your agents cannot even book flights for Nigerians, and you have to go online, and you have to pay dollars, and so on and so forth. What's, what's going on? Good afternoon, Honorable Speaker. I stand on existing protocol. Um, like Dr. Fatukon rightly explained, a lot of the issues that we're facing is not just peculiar to British Airways. I guess I can speak on behalf of all the international airlines that are here. Most of us have sold tickets at a particular exchange rate that we had no control over. And then we're mandated to ensure that there's a particular window where we can bid for this revenue that we have accumulated. Just to explain, there's a bidding process that goes on with all the banks that we all have in Nigeria here. So we put in our bid on a two weekly basis, if I'm right. And when we put in the bids, we submit the revenues that we've made, and then CBN allocates an amount. They call it the success of the bid. And these bids have either spots or forwards. Spots means immediately you get your fund, or within five days you get the money back in dollars so that you can remit to your own countries. Forward means it can be 15 days, it can be 30, it can be 45 days, which we're all okay with. But what happens to these funds is that after the maturity date, a lot of these funds are not remitted. That's what we call trapped funds. And we have quite a lot of those trapped funds. So remittances that are already matured, that we should have received maybe in June, July, August, or September, that has already passed their maturity dates, are still with the government and has not been given back to the airlines. So, 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 the, so the bids were in the case successful? Yes. But they're trapped? But they're trapped. And they are not in our account. Just they're to correct, they're not. So that is what has necessitated you to, to take the approach and to correct even that, for British Airways, I can speak. So we've had to make changes to the way we sell tickets in Nigeria. This time, two years ago, anybody that has a Nigerian card can successfully make bookings on British Airways. I can attest to that. But what has happened is that the banks have placed a limit on those cards, the Nigerian cards. So before you could do 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 on those cards. But right now, probably you could only do $100 or maybe on those cards. So we're not discriminating. We do not insist that it must be a dollar card. If you're holding a Ghanaian CD card, you can actually make a booking on British Airways on BA.com. If you have any other cards from any other country, you can actually make bookings on BA.com. Unfortunately, because of the problems that we're having with scarcity, the banks in turn have placed limits on the, on the amount, or shall I say, the, the, there's, a, there's a cap on what you can do with your Naira cards. And that's probably why the travel agents are referring to the fact that they cannot use anything on BA.com for their dollar cards. Question, please. May I ask if this rule? Question, OK. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Just for my own understanding, this new rule imposed on Nigerians, is it allowed within BASA? Is there such restriction and such liberty to make such decision within IATA and BASA? You see, um, 
in the Basa, you have different provisions, okay? And uh, some fall under economic regulations, and uh, with the NCA or the Civil Aviation Authority of each country uh, regulates. So um, in this particular case, uh, selling in a particular coin, we know, and all the airlines know, that they are not supposed to sell in dollars in Nigeria. They know that. No airline wants to sell in dollars if he has guarantee, even if you to be tempted to sell in dollars, if he has guarantee that he'll be able to repartee his phone at when it's due, why should they do that? You see, what we are experiencing is a reaction, I we can say epidemic reaction, to the long time that this money has been blocked. We are talking of March 2020, now to 2022. So after that, as any operator, I don't want to be sentimental, I'd like to address the issue. As, as an operator, as a businessman, if you have your money blocked in a system for over a year, two years, will you continue to expose yourself for further money to be blocked? That is the fundamental question, my honorable speaker. And that's what the airlines are doing. They're switching event. Necessity but, is the mother of invention. But that's at the same saying. time, I have to support that our airlines should also have opportunity right. to fly. Connectivity to Nigeria, that's what we pay for. Everybody should be able to fly. What about the issue of reciprocity? That is we support the reciprocity. Okay. Um, I told myself that I might not be speaking today, but uh, the, patriotic, uh, the patriotism in me would not allow me to keep short. There are so many issues raised here, sir. I want everybody in this place to understand that the Nigerian airlines, the indigenous airlines of Nigeria, are not against foreign airlines repatriating their money. We are not against that. But we feel so sad that some Nigerians and international airlines are using certain narratives that tend to rubbish our government and the people of Nigeria. And that is unacceptable. He who goes to equity must go to equity with clean hands. A situation whereby people went on television, sponsored some agents to go on television to badmouth the government of Nigeria that they has failed because funds were trapped. It's unacceptable. There are so many countries in the world. Like I said, whoever wants to go to equity must go to equity with clean hands. When they say uh, this issue of trying to prevent Nigerian airlines from doing what they are doing here. It didn't, that it just started now. It didn't start now. Let's take our minds back to the COVID time, COVID evacuation. And when they say it is because of trap forms, that is why the tickets are down, the disparity is so huge. I disagree, I beg to disagree. During the evacuation, fear was not this much. We struggled, AP struggled to help its own citizens to get landing permits into Heathrow. We went, the, our tickets were sold out within two hours for a 364-seater aircraft, our 777. Why? Because Airpeace understood the plight of Nigerians and gave a fare of uh, less than 400,000 Naira. Why another airline coming from there I was taking about 2,000 pounds for Nigerians to do that. We did to and fro, return, return, less than $600 for Nigerians. Tickets were sold out within two hours. We went there to discourage us. They sent dogs after our aircraft, sniffing our pilots, and everybody, at the end of the day, stopped APs from doing his work around on his aircraft, something that violates safety. They don't want that aircraft to crash or what? If you take off, the rule of aviation is that if you take off now, once you lift off the ground for just two minutes, if that plane comes to land, before that plane can take off again, it must do a walk around. Because anything could have hit the plane in transit. We flew six hours into London. We were not allowed to go around an aircraft to know if that aircraft had been compromised or infringed. Thankfully, NCA, I think, uh, a petition, I care on that. This they do to us. And Nigerians will not go on television to do this. We hate ourselves in this country. Nigerians will not go on television to, 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 to ask them questions about that. 
but we are very quick to, de to destroy the government of Nigeria. We are very quick to run the government of Nigeria down, that they failed because foreign airlines couldn't get their, their, their money. Nigerians must begin to destigmatize themselves. We must begin to do that. It's so unfortunate. Anything could have happened to that aircraft on its way back to Nigeria. And because they saw that we are going to bring these fares down, the second one, which we had gotten the approval, they canceled it. They canceled it. And what did I do? I didn't want Nigerians to suffer. I hired a European airline, paid for Nigerians, 584 Nigerians to be brought back to their homeland, free of charge. I did it. It's not only South Africa. We must begin to love our country. Uh, we are not against them collecting their monies. They must collect their money. But how do you explain, sir, that somebody flying from South Africa nine hours to London is paying less than a Nigerian flying six hours? How do you explain that somebody flying from London to, to, to Las Vegas, even now, is paying far less, half, than what a Nigerian is paying for six hours? I am not against it, but I will implore IATA. We belong to IATA. APC is a member of IATA, and uh, Fatou Kou knows he has been very helpful also. IATA should use the same venom and force to tell these people that we are qualified. If APC could do 14 hours non-stop flight to China, which we have started, what is six hours to London is a piece of cake. It's a piece of cake. But we are hitting brick wall now and then. So I expect IATA also, and those Nigerians clapping for this, to also let them know that we are doing ourselves some dangers in this country. Our forest reserves are depleted. Nigeria did not seize these funds, because what is being pushed out there is that the government of Nigeria blocked the funds or seized the funds. Central bank has asked them that they can use the I&E window. Just like the Nigerian airlines, are they seizing our money? No. We are going through the I&E window. We do even the forward thing she was talking about. Yes, at times they say 90 days or 60 days. Sometimes you may not get it. But the government cannot kill itself. You cannot give what you don't have. If the government had the money, the foreign airlines would have been paid. And again, sir, what should be thinking of now is solution to these issues so that they should stop blackmailing Nigeria. How do we solve this problem? Number one, you knew quite well that your funds will be trapped in Nigeria or brought in Nigeria. You know quite where that will happen, that you may not be able to get this money. And you're increasing your frequency every day to the detriment of the local airlines. You're increasing your frequency, knowing fully where you're inviting your, to, to yourself certain you know, situations. What we are saying is allow the Nigerians to also access your country, contribute to their nation. It's Nigeria first to me. I don't care. I know after speaking today, I might face another problem tomorrow, both on the international level and everywhere, but I don't care. I'm ready to go down for my country. So let us begin. Let us begin to uh, not allow uh, 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 allow to, to continue. If you know, I was going to golf. Epis was go flying into golf. And one of the golf carriers, within two weeks, apply to have a third frequency out of Lagos. A third frequency, they were flying twice out of Lagos, flying once out of Abuja. They quickly, that was in 2019, quickly applied, and they were getting it until we kicked. Why? It's not as if they will get enough passengers to do the third frequency. The idea is to snug the life out of the indigenous carrier so that when you close, they will continue doing what they know how to do, but making Nigerians pay through their noses. And Nigerians don't see some of these things. It's hurtful. It's very hurtful. So what we are saying is we support the foreign airlines getting their money. This is business. However, the, the, the country is not going to cut its head to pay them. If we don't have the money, what do we do? So it's not that the government does not want to pay them. They, on their own, should also reduce their frequencies. The cutthroat competition should stop. If you know that you're not going to get that money, reduce your frequencies. Why doing many frequencies at the end of the day, you compound woes on the country. You're paying 2.3 million to go to London for six hours flight. That is indefensible, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I think, the, again, the issues are, are two things. One, the trap funds, how do they get their money? 
two, moving forward. Moving forward. So that you don't fall into the same trap again. How do we open up the BASA agreement for reciprocity? I mean, they cannot answer that. That's between us. Uh, that would be, that would be like we said, the aviation minister and the rest of them. Um, a, lot of, a lot of issues have come up. I don't know if any of my colleagues have any issues or questions. Chairman Aviation, Chief Whip. Yeah. Victor. Uh, well, the Vice President. And of course, the media has been replete with news around this, the trapped funds, to use uh, that term. And um, we've also had um, engagements with the International Air, Air Transport Association. And um, some of the issues that threw up, and of course, as you know, the mandate for the PEBEC is on ease of doing business. And essentially, this includes both local investors and international investors. And some of the concerns that it thrown up alleged breach of contract, what those sort of contractual issues in terms of um, non-compliance with uh, certain contractual issues, the outlook for Nigeria, and of course, um, what is exp being experienced by most Nigerians and has been spoken about here, the issue around the high costs in tickets. And then most importantly, because this is something that we speak about a lot um, in terms of our interactions, both with local and international investors, what we sell for Nigeria is the ability for you to repatriate your investments. So investing in Nigeria, when we're trying to attract investments in Nigeria, along the government's policy, uh, plans to also take over 100 million Nigerians out of poverty, with the reliance on foreign direct investments. So these are some of the issues that was thrown up in our discussions. But then again, we note the comments that have been made this morning, just like uh, the Right Honorable Speaker mentioned. The, um, essentially, the topic for discussion has since expanded as a result of a lot of the comments that was said here today, and I do believe that um, it requires a lot of interrogation, and as you also noted, the people who are supposed to be in the room to ensure that we can have the right level of engagement towards solution, because that was the objective of this meeting, to actually look towards solutions around track funds and possibly the new issues that have come up this afternoon. So I guess um, my plea would be that um, for the stakeholders who are not here today, probably a mention for them around the new issues, just so that as the Right Honorable Speaker said, that in terms of um, rescheduling, so as to have a more productive meeting, just because again, our concerns is around how it affects ease of doing business outlook, both in Nigeria and abroad, and so we consider it to be a very, uh, on an urgent basis, but also to ensure that the right information is available during those discussions. So it heads up to the stakeholders to ensure that they bring the right level of information and also persons for the next meetings. Thank you. Again, um, I was with this day ministerial uh, retreat going on. Uh, that's why they're not here. So I'm glad we've taken your submissions. Uh, a lot of things have been opened up, a lot of things to unbundle, um, and um, we'll have to reschedule to hear from them uh, so that we can chart a way forward. But in the meantime, whilst we do that, whilst we try to, 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 um, to look for solutions, I'm also going to ask or plead with the uh, airlines, the foreign airlines, to show some good faith. And what's that good faith, or how do you show good faith? To open up your portals or whatever it is for business to continue as usual so that Nigerians can purchase your tickets so that your travel agents your travel agents can work uh, whilst this is going going on so you are doing your end and we're doing our end it cannot be a one-sided thing so we're gonna give ourselves you know some time frame whilst you go back to status quo we will also now, at this point, look for how you can repatriate, how we can get your, if it's a special intervention, if it's whatever, we'll, we'll find a way to deal with it. Uh, so it, it, it has to be, for want of a better word, you know, symbiotic. As we're doing our uh, end, you need to, to do your end. So we, we need some sort of a good faith assurance from you. I don't know who's going to speak on that. Is it IATA or is it each individual airline? Um, I think the, what you have with you managers, uh, 
they don't have the final season on the operation into Nigeria. They are, their function do not extend to that. They have to go back to their head offices, communicate that to their head offices, and then now we respond uh, to the head office with, because they don't have the power to decide yeah. that. I'm aware, I didn't think that yes. it would be the most yes. that final But they can decision. go back, they can I'm carry out, out there so that they can get back to us and then go and put the body out. Uh, okay, I mean, uh, this is a big pain on the part of my airline. Uh, we're ready to, to, to go back to start school, you know, pending the time. I, if you want to put some kind of window to it, that's fine, no problem. Mr. Speaker, moving forward, out, finding a way to utilize those Nigerian funds. I really mean that, you, like you said, necessity is mother of invention. Today, NCA and all the aviation agencies collect landing charges from these foreign airlines in foreign exchange. It's convenient for them because it's also their own source of revenue and any foreign exchange. I know also that the foreign airlines have a plot arrangement with local fuel suppliers, whereby they agree on future prices and pay in foreign exchange. It's also good for the local fuel supply because they are source of foreign exchange for import. Since we have found ourselves in this situation, and if it's not contravening any law, part of the things you might consider is to go into discussion with the NCA, the fuel suppliers, to know if a consideration can be made that some of these Naira funds here can be used in place of dollar to pay these local expenses. That's a suggestion. And, and, sec yeah. and secondly, I appreciate your understanding and humility to plead before the foreign airlines. And I was also listening to the Aita country rep who said it's not their final decision. In addition, please, this you have told us is a violation of Aita law. That is charging not allowing selling ticket out of Nigeria for an exchange. We also expect you to ensure enforcement. You know it. So it's not enough to tell us. They have to talk to their country to decide when it is already known to us that we're in a lawmaking environment and we're a manager who understands the law. Don't allow them to violate law because it's Nigeria. We should also factor it in. You know, that's just what I want to. I'm moving forward, uh, since we're also expanding the boundaries. I know it's a topic for another day, but the introduction of Nigerian air into the system does not help this matter. We will discuss that later on. <laughs> but I just want to put it that you might put it as possible discussions that will form part of the final solution to this. So please, Ayata, don't choose law to enforce and not to enforce in Nigeria. Right. Please. So, Dr. Thank you. Obiora has um, made a point which had escaped me. Uh, when you were, uh, by admission, self admission, yeah, the law is actually being broken, correct? Correct? No. The airline are not selling in dollars. I'm sorry? The airline are not selling in Nigeria in dollars. So the, that law is not broken. The, the, my question was, is, is there a breach of the BASA agreement? Or no, the breach, if there's a breach of BASA agreement, um, I think the agent, that the best person to really answer that, okay, is the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. But you, now, but you, I, I but you did, hold on a second, hold no, on a second, because we're what? trying to look for solutions here. Yes. You did say, you know, about half an hour ago, that yes, on that BASA, the BASA law, they're not allowed to sell by uh, 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 foreign currency. Okay, okay, okay. Let me explain. It is not written in any basa okay. that they have to 
let me let me let me just let okay. you that they have to uh, sell in dollar or not sell in dollar. It's not in the basket. It's a CBN regulation that the length, uh, that airline are not expected are not are, should not sell in dollar. It's a CBN regulation. Okay. Okay. So and it's not a it's not a Basa international no, agreement. No, no. It's, it's, a, it's a it's a it's a it's a Nigerian. It's a Nigerian. Um, either way, some some law is being broken. So the question is now: Is it Basa or is it CBN uh, law? Okay. So having heard that, uh, let me still maintain my very soft punch to the airlines that please um, talk to your guys out there that you are breaking the CBN regulation. And that we've also appealed to you to revert to status quo and that we're looking into the matter. Once that is done, it gives us more motivation to try and assist. He also mentioned the issue of, uh, because I know somebody alluded to it, I don't know if it was Ayata, about um, using some of those funds that are quote unquote trapped to. Um, uh, that they're not under any obligation. Yeah, and I totally agree. You can't tell people how to use their money. You can't. But he has corrected, he has, but I thought he was also talking about maybe investing in the country, uh, infrastructure, or whatever. That's what I thought too. But he has um, given clarification that no, it's monies you're going to pay for anyway, you know, anyway, uh, from fuel to landing charges and the rest of that. So why don't you like maybe pay or front or, or discount whatever is uh, is being transferred so that we, so that, we, so that Nigeria will not be the, the number one anymore by the time you discount these things. Sir, uh, honourable speaker, the airline will be more than happy yes. if that could happen because they have been clamoring for it. But for example, Nama charges completely in foreign exchange. Nama, Nigeria Airspace Management Agency. And it's not peculiar to NAMA, actually, to, to be sincere. All over the world, overflight charges are charged in foreign currency. NAMA is not wrong in doing that. Really, that is the standard worldwide. And then, so, um, but if today, because of the situation, but NAMA also needs, for example, to procure their, their equipment, to maintain their equipment in foreign currency. They have to buy all these parts, all the radar maintenance, all these things in foreign currency. So we have had that discussion before, but they also have a very good point that airline, please understand from us that we don't purchase these things on the, on the local market. We need the dollar. The same thing we are having discussed with NCAA, uh, if the airline can also use their NERA to pay for those uh, part of the 5% charges that are in dollars. But they also have to train their staff abroad. They also have to send staff Those are very so, minute uh, details, which yeah, once, but, the, but, once the mind set is that, okay, yeah. we'll try and do this, and we'll work out the, uh -huh. the dot but, the I's and cross the T's. That's, that's all I needed to know. Yes, it's very, very well. So having said that, I, I think uh, uh, Chairman of the, 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 the CBN Governor, Aviation Minister, and the rest of them, uh, perhaps maybe on Thursday, if that's going to work for them, perhaps Thursday, and then we'll communicate, we'll get back to so we have a fuller house, correct? No, uh, yes, yes. You let me know. CBN and uh, yes. What days? What days going to be? But the, the earlier, the better. Especially since the airlines are uh, airlines are on the basis of good faith going to revert to start school. So the earlier we, Mrs. Uh, Otiyalo, I saw you looking away. In. Um the CBN governor, in fairness, they've actually tried in the past, and IATA can attest to that as well. But we all know what's going on in the country. So in good faith, they've accepted the bids, but the challenge with us is this. Our cost base is not mainly in Nigeria. We still need to repatriate some of those monies. So um, what we've done at British Airways, like he was making a comment about, we do not sell tickets in dollars just to state that. In fact, all the agencies, I don't know anyone that can actually say the porter or the inventory is open for them to sell in dollars. So we do not sell in dollars. BA.com is hosted in the UK. Anybody worldwide 
have access to BA.com. It's just that it's a card payment. So depending on what your card can do on BA.com, that's actually what would be deducted on those cards. Okay, but, 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 but it was, it hasn't always been a card payment. So the card has always worked up yeah. until like two years ago, just before pandemic. You could oh, use your Naira. No, so that was what I explained, that because of the issue that we're having, we've had to make that decision to actually make changes to the way is we're that, selling. That decision we're asking that to be looked into, yeah. and we will take it on board, sir. So sensitive is Thursday.